morning, everyone. Welcome to DevToberfest week two, and this is Thursday. And if you've been following along, you know that uh, Thursday means all things low code and no code. And in week two, we have a full set of content coming your way uh, today, all focused on SAP AppGyver. Um, so I'm showing you a little bit of the agenda of what to expect in all of today's sessions. Uh, we're going to kick off the morning here with uh, Get Started Building Apps Fast with SAP AppGyver. That's the session you're in right now, and we'll get into that content here in just a minute. But just looking ahead at the rest of the day, we've got a packed agenda here. Uh, the session coming up in just an hour from now will be a sneak peek of the SAP AppGyver integration into SAP BTP and uh, a look ahead to some new functionality that's going to come out over the next few weeks and months. And we're going to have a creator spotlight session later this morning as well uh, with Esme. She's going to look at some of the great applications that have been built in the SAP ecosystem uh, by professionals and hobbyists alike. Then we'll have a session on making your apps beautiful, really getting in and uh, you know, customizing the look and feel of your apps using AppGyver tooling, and even create pixel perfect uh, look and feel to your applications. Then we're gonna have AppGyver for pro code developers. Uh, so what are the specific features that are part of AppGyver that can uh, appeal to professional developers, those of us that want to get in and tweak your application by writing even some custom JavaScript code, which you uh, may not know that you can do in AppGyver, but you can. We'll have a look at that in that session. And then we'll close out the day with tips and tricks from an SAP AppGyver guru. Uh, so once you're up to speed on the basics of AppGyver, how you can really maximize the most out of it with, uh, with some of these uh, deep level tips and tricks. But back to the session for today, Get started building apps fast with SAP AppGyver. Uh, we have Kanishka here with us today. I'm going to uh, turn over to, uh, to you to get things started. Uh, thanks for joining us and looking forward to your session. Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas. And uh, hello everyone, uh, I am Kanishka. Uh, I'm a first generation citizen developer here at SAP and I prefer not to code. And, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be presenting uh, this session uh, in DevTubers Festival. Uh, so in using SAP AppGyver, we try to redefine the application development. So in order to redefine application development, we also redefine a few terms in application development, which I'll be showing now. So first of all, what is an application? So an application is a program that is designed to do some specific task. So it, this task can be anything. And this application will have two parts, which is front end and the back end. So this front end is the user interface, what the user can see and has access to. And back end is the place where the specific task is actually happening. In simpler words, we can consider an application as in a restaurant where the restaurant dining is the front end and uh, the kitchen is the back end where the specific task is happening. In continuing with this restaurant analogy, we can say that our SAP app driver is a fast food where most of the ingredients are ready and you just need to customize your choice. In this case, it's just components. And there are three stages of building an application using app driver. They are data connection, building logics, and building UI. So let's see what happens in each stage. So in an application, like we said, based on an input from the front end, the back end will execute the task and send it back to the front end. So in this data connection phase, uh, we will be establishing a connection between this front end and the back end. So we'll be using an a API to establish this connection between this front end and the back end building. In logic building, you will be defining the functionality of your application. So you will build logics on how to get the input from the user, how to send the values through the API and how the results will be displayed for the users to consume it. So as a, as a beginner, you can start using uh, some flowcharts to define the functionality of your application and you can easily find the logics uh, which matches how you want what the functionality of your application. 
And the last stage is the most exciting and fun part for all the citizen developers, which is you are building. So this is the place where you get to show uh, all your creativity in creating some intuitive UI for your application. So building UI in AppGiver is very easy where you have a, a long library of UI components. You just need to drag and drop them and you can simply customize them with the simpler steps. Yeah. So these are some uh, beginner uh, things you need to know before you start using AppGiver. So now let's uh, head on to building some real application. So this is the application lobby where uh, all the, where you create all the magic using the low code no code tools offered by SAP. So in the application lobby here, you can when you click on create, you can see uh, all the services subscribed in your BTP account. So since I want to create an app Gaver project, I can start uh, by selecting app Gaver project, and I have created one already. So I'll just start on with it. So today we are going to build a barcode scanner application where uh, we get to see what uh, or what the logic components can do in SAP AppGiver. So this is the AppGiver Composer Pro, which you can, which can also be called as uh, the development IDE for uh, AppGiver, where you can uh, create a, a UI for your application using this uh, component library. And also you can create logics uh, for your application using uh, the logic components available in the logic library. And you can also uh, create uh, change the background of your application under the properties over here where you can uh, uh, change the color with the uh, with, uh, with the uh, fact uh, default colors available and you can also add some new colors by clicking on new palette here and you can choose a wide range of colors and uh, give a name to it so that you can use it uh, further in your applications and you can also add multiple pages to your applications uh, because applications will have many things to display like different screens you can also add a navigation bar in your application to make it easier for users to navigate between these pages, be it home page or any other pages uh, for moving forward in your application. And then we have a, a data tab where you can connect your application to different data sources. Uh, for example, we can see we have different types of data uh, connections available like REST API, OData, uh, and you can also connect your application to Google Firebase to get some Google an analytics of your application. And uh, you can also connect your application to uh, SAP systems using BTP destinations uh, very easily. So the reason we have multiple uh, data connection is, uh, so all these APIs in the internet, they do not have a standardized way of consuming it. So every developer develops AI, uh, the API in a different ways and they have different way of consuming it. So in order to accommodate all types of API configuration, we have this data configurator where you can uh, easily add uh, this data connection for the APIs. Yeah. And then for the UI, we also have something called tree, which displays all the components uh, available in your uh, page so that it is easy for uh, you to uh, select the components which you want to edit or uh, change. Yeah. So now we'll start, uh, we'll head on with the uh, user uh, seeing some of the logic components. So first uh, let me add a button. Yeah. And then uh, I'll add a logic to this button uh, to scan some uh, barcode or QR code. So, we, we, here you can also see what will be the output of the logic component uh, in the properties tab. So this barcode uh, scanner will be giving an output of the barcode for of, of the barcode you scan. So let's test how this actually works. So I'll save this. Uh, I'll also add a toast component to see what the output of this logic component is. And now. I will just bind this uh, toast to display the output of the uh, Spark uh, logic component. And I'll save it now. Yeah. Now you can preview how this application works uh, in real time using the launch tab over here. 
So you can also uh, preview this application on web application uh, mode, or you can also download this SAP app web preview app on your uh, mobile phone, uh, where you can uh, uh, see how your uh, application works uh, on real time in your mobile phone. So since uh, I, I'll be using my mobile phone to test this application now, So now you can see this is the SAP app giver preview app uh, on your mobile phone. So you can easily connect uh, your app, your uh, app, uh, SAP app giver preview app to your app giver account by scanning this QR code. And you can scan the, uh, the QR code which is available in your launch tab, which then quickly connects uh, your uh, mobile phone to your uh, app giver account where you can see all the applications uh, developed in your uh, account. So I'll just open this barcode scanner app. So here I can see the UI which was uh, created over here. Yeah. Now we'll just scan the barcode and see what the output, uh, what, the, what is the output of the barcode? Yeah. I think uh, it got, but yeah, and here you can see uh, this barcode is displaying the value four zero some some value number. Yeah, so that means every barcode or QR code is uh, has some values embedded in it. So now we'll uh, we'll connect this application to a to a, uh, a database where we get the food like the value uh, the uh, information about this food uh, like when you scan your uh, QR code. So. I am adding a REST API integration uh, for this Open Food Facts uh, API, where I'll be getting a lot of information about uh, the food I'm consuming. And then I configured it to get some record uh, based on the barcode value. Now we'll, we'll see how to uh, make use of this API and create uh, your application. So when you uh, when you scan the QR barcode and you get a response of uh, all the nutrient values of the of your food, and but you need some some variable to store this information so that it can be displayed uh, multiple times. So in order to do that, uh, I'll be creating a new variable to store this result. So when I can switch back to this variables view where I can create uh, different types of variables. So AppGiver, in AppGiver, you can create different types of variables like uh, app variables, page variables, and uh, data variables, which is uh, which are the variables uh, which is used to connect to all the API connections you use in your application. AppGiver also offers something called translation variables with which you can uh, translate your application to multiple languages, even Zulu uh, language spoken in South Africa. Yeah, so right now I'll be creating a new data variable. Where uh, I can uh, add, uh, where where I can save all the information uh, from this uh, uh, data connection. Yeah. Now I'll change this uh, the the uh, this text component to display some some other information. So in th in the text component, you can either display some static information like. Or you can also assign uh, some uh, bind some values to these components using the binding menu, where you can bind uh, some values like uh, data, like variable data variables or uh, any other variables. Or you can also use some formulas uh, to define some new values to this uh, component. Yeah. So I'll just add another static value saying that what what the user has to do here. I'll just say scan the barcode of your food, yeah. And I can also change the label on my button. So I'll change the label on my button to scan barcode. Yeah, and I can also change the style of the button uh, by click selecting the style, going to the style tab over here where I can change the, uh, the play with the properties of the button and change how the way it is being uh, viewed on my uh, screen. You can also use some advanced properties to play around with the visibility of the components. Uh, so if you select 
uh, if you select true, that component will be visible. If you select false, the component will not be visible. So we can play around with uh, visibility pro properties of the components as well. So for now, I'll keep it uh, visible and I'll, I'll also change the color uh, so that it can be seen uh, with the red contrast. Now I have to create a logic uh, for this uh, application where when I click on this uh, button, I need to open the QR code scanner and then uh, the, the result of the QR code, I'll use the result of this QR code scanner and send it to the API so that I can fetch the uh, nutrient facts about uh, the food I'm consuming. So for now, I'll just keep this toast bar assigned. And we, we already created a logic to scan barcode or QR code. We also have some uh, other uh, device uh, logics like uh, uh, take a photo which uh, triggers to open the camera from your device or also GPS location node which triggers to uh, uh, activate the accelerometer from your device to get uh, some information like the speed of the, the speed you're moving and uh, latitude and longitude values and so on. And and then we also have some uh, data logic functions, uh, which which are similar to like which are like get record, get record collection, create record. So you can use one of this uh, logic function. Use I'm using get record over here, so that uh, I can get the information based on the result uh, from this uh, QR code logic component. Yeah. Now in the properties of this logic components, I can select. Uh, which uh, data variable I want to like from which data connection I need to use. So in this application, we only have one data connection. So by default, you will see the existing data connection. But when, you, when your application has multiple data connections, you can uh, change the data resource name simply by selecting uh, over here. And then this data connection needs barcode value uh, so that it can get the information about the uh, food based on this value. So we can get this value from this uh, by scanning the QR code on your device. So we have we are using a law, scan QR logic component. So I'm just uh, binding the result of this scan QR logic component. So I'm opening the binding menu. Here I can see a new uh, binding option called output value of another node. So which means uh, I can assign the output value of the previous uh, nodes available in the logic component. So I'm just selecting the output value of another node. And here I can see the existing nodes uh, in my logic composer, which is the receive event and the scan QR or barcode. So I need to assign the output value of scan QR or barcode. I select this and I open the QR code content and I'll save it. So now uh, I'll get the information of the food based on the bar barcode I scan. So I need to save this information somewhere so that uh, I can use it to display the values. In order to do that, I, uh, for the I created a data variable to store all this information. So I'm using this logic function called set data variable under this variable functions to save all this information uh, from the API connection. So we have different uh, types of set uh, variable functions here. So you you can use uh, the appropriate function based on the variable you're using. So if you're trying to assign some value to app variable, then you can use uh, the set app variable logic function. Or when you're trying to uh, assign some value to page variable, you can uh, assign uh, use this logic function. So you will get to know when to use which type of variable when you're building uh, multiple applications. So now I'm using this set data variable function because I'm trying to uh, save the uh, information from a data connection. So in the set data variable connection, again, you can select uh, the data source you want to uh, get the result from. So since I only have one connection, uh, by default, it shows. And in the binding menu, I can open, uh, bind the output value of the get record node so that I can it can be saved uh, in this uh, very, uh, data variable. So I open the output value of another node. And now you can see uh, an extra logic uh, component called get record. Uh, now I'm going to select this get record. And here you can see different uh, types of values uh, I'm getting from this uh, uh, data connection. So I might need to use all these values uh, to display. So I'll just select uh, all of like this record, which will give me, uh, which will save all the information from the data connection. And now I'm saving it. Yeah. So this is it. So now this is the logic of your of my application. It's as simple as that. So I'm just uh, like when when I tap this button, 
uh, the application will trigger uh, the camera application so that uh, I can scan a barcode or QR code. And then uh, based on the result from the barcode, uh, it will get the record, uh, like it will get the information of the food item uh, uh, from the using the API. And this information is saved in a data variable. And I'm going to save this logic function, like logic. So we, uh, we, we created a logic to fetch the information from the API, that's all fine. Now we need to uh, save, uh, the, like we need to create a, an UI to display all the values from this logic. So for that, uh, we need to find some UI components. So by default, you will have uh, some limited logic components, some basic limited components uh, available in the logic library. But you have something called marketplace, which has hundreds of uh, logic and uh, uh, visual components are available. So you can simply select them and install it on your uh, application and you can straight away use it. So let me browse. So yeah, I think I'll use this uh, large item list to display the information of the food. So I'll just select this component. Yeah, and it's installed. So now I can access this uh, component under the install tab. Yeah, so here uh, it is large item list. So I'll now drag and drop this large item list component. So in this large item list component, uh, we are going to uh, assign the image. Uh, uh, we have an image called image uh, tile. We have a title tile and we also have text tile. So using this, uh, so we'll, we'll try to uh, display the image of the food item, uh, which is being scanned in this image component. So you can see on this properties tab, you have different types of data like sources. For image source, you have the, by default, you have some uh, 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 image icon using the help of the URL. So you can either upload uh, an image from your uh, system by default, uh, like which will display this image all the time in static. But I want to display different items uh, based on the food item I'm scanning on. So in, uh, since it is dynamic, I'll, I'll bind some other value. So here I can uh, bind the data variable uh, where the image, uh, where I can get the image. So I'll select the data variable. I'll select the open food facts. Here I can see all the values uh, which is available under the uh, open, like in the data variable open food facts. But you can see not all values are compatible in this component because this component can only display the images, not uh, uh, any other number. So since it is a very large uh, uh, list, it is sometimes difficult to find uh, what you want. So in order to make it simpler, I can use a formula bar, uh, for, uh, formula uh, where I can easily select uh, what I want. So I'll replace this uh, static text. So here I can use uh, like pre-built uh, data functions and uh, 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 system info directly to create some advanced uh, algorithms uh, or uh, create some advanced data functions for, for my application. So we also have some uh, uh, engineering and financial functions uh, where to calculate some advanced uh, uh, interest rates uh, or trying to uh, predict values based on some historical data or some, some, some things like that. So now I'll select uh, the data variable. Uh, you can see that app variable and page uh, variables are empty because we don't have them created in the application yet. So for now, I'll just select the data variable. And here I can see the open food facts. Now I want to display some images. So I'll just look for uh, image. So here I can see the image URL, uh, which means this will display the image of the food item I scan. So I just save it. And now I want uh, the main uh, title to display the name of the food. So again, I'll use a food uh, formula menu to find what I want to display. I'll select a data variable, remove the existing value, product ID. Yeah. So you can also preview what uh, this component will be displaying uh, under the example results. So since it is a name, it will be displaying some text value. So I can preview this and I can, uh, if I'm very ha happy with what the component is displaying, I can save it. And now under description, I want uh, the application to display some something, uh, some nutrient values. So I'll just uh, go back to the formulas. 
now select data variable yeah so you can select a fat fat value salt value or uh, I'll, I'll prefer sugar value because lately i'm calculating uh, the sugar uh, content in the food i consume so you can see this application this component will display the sugar value sugar level of the food uh, so it's either high or low so i can i'll save it now so you can see this application will display the co content this way it either says high or low but i'm not sure uh, like it is not clear what is high what is low so i'll use formula to define it more in a more clear clearer way so i'll open the formula bar again so i'll add some static text called sugar level and i'll use uh, and, and i'll append it with this uh, data variable so now i can see uh, what this uh, component will be displaying it will display sugar level i'll also add some so that yeah so now i can i can know what what is i or what is low so i'll save it and now i can save this application and we can preview what uh, what this uh, application can do yeah let me quickly open my uh, sap app giver preview app to see what happens now yeah so you can see the changes uh, uh, have happened uh, in real time now I'll click on scan QR code. Now I'm scanning my mint. Yeah, now you can see uh, uh, the, the, the name of the food item is displayed there, fresh mints and the sugar level is pretty high in it. Yeah, I guess uh, it is pretty high. Now we can also scan some other uh, item. Scan QR code. Yeah, now this is 30 where there is no sugar at all. So. That's cool, I guess this is good for health. And now I'll just scan my favorite item, which is Coca-Cola. Yeah, which is having pretty low sugar level. I guess it's not harmful for my health, yeah. So this way you can create a application in just few uh, clicks and uh, some uh, very few customization. And this is how you build applications using app paper. And uh, then uh, the pos like the possibilities of creating like the use cases for app driver is endless, where you can create um, personal utility apps like this, or you can create some uh, B two B or B two C applications for your enterprises. And yeah, that's uh, like the possibilities. Uh, you can build endless uh, solutions using app driver. All right, thank you. Is that the uh the conclusion of your of your demo there is very nice um we do have a couple questions from the audience um and i tried to answer a few of them as we go but uh probably good to recap here um one of the first questions was is there a free trial for app Giver in btp um now i I did link to the free community edition of AppGyver on www.appgyver.com. And as well, um, I put a link to the Discovery Center, where in the roadmap for the uh, AppGyver service, it does show that in Q4 that we're in, uh, that AppGyver on BTP will be coming to the free tier. And I think you can probably watch closer to tech ed time here in a couple of weeks and you'll see something there, but I don't know, Kanishka, if there's anything you want to add to that, that, that question. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you can see that uh, we have two versions of app Gaver, which is the community edition, uh, which is available on appgaver.com. It is for free. You can register, sign up and use it, uh, start creating your applications. We also offer app Gaver in the BTP, uh, which will have more uh, functionalities uh, like uh, direct integrations to SAP systems. And also we, ha we have uh, recently added something uh, very cool, uh, which is collaboration feature where you can uh, share uh, the collaboration, uh, uh, like you can share the uh, development of your application with your team members so that uh, people can work together and uh, create solutions even faster and better. And yeah. 
thank you for sharing the other resources. So these are some uh, new features. And also with the TechEd, we are introducing something called um, low code, no code backend uh, so that uh, you, uh, SAP AppGuide will soon be a full stack uh, no code application development tool where you can also create uh, the backend for your application uh, in a similar way without writing any code. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for those updates and news. And I think we'll see a little bit more of that in the uh, in the session coming up here in the in the very next hour, uh, where uh, we're going to give a sneak peek of some of the new functionality coming to the BTP version of of AppGyver. Um, and actually, that's uh, that was a timely answer you gave there because one of the later questions that we got in the chat was also, you know, kind of clarifying, you know, what is the architecture here? What is, what what is the tooling that you use to build AppGyver? applications and you kind of explained that pretty well there with the uh uh with the uh with the application um uh, the project overview uh you know the, we do also have the SAP business application studio somebody was asking in the in the chat you know what's the difference there or um you, you know does one replace the other and of course we have both offerings um I don't, I don't know if there's anything you want to expand on there as far as AppGyver versus Business Application Studio slash Business Application Studio low-code perspective. Yeah, so this AppGyver tool is a visual programming tool uh, where you can simply drag and drop components and start building. And AppGyver is a purely no-code uh, tool uh, where you don't need to write or learn, learn to code. Whereas uh, Business Application Studio uh, is more focused towards uh, like the real uh, like the developers uh, who are very uh, very much aware of uh, coding product lifecycle and stuff are also familiar with the uh, SAP systems like Fiori and other systems. So Business Application Studio uh, helps to increase the productivity of developers uh, with uh, with some uh, development blocks re ready. And they can just uh, make it makes their development easier. Whereas the AppGyver, you can build applications from scratch uh, using visual components and other stuff. So this is the main difference for uh, AppGyver and Business Application Studio. So AppGyver is completely known for citizen developers and also professional developers can also make use for it. But uh, Business Application Studio might not be very user friendly for uh, people who are not aware of, like for citizen developers. All right, excellent. And the last question that we have in the chat was uh, more specifically about your demo and the uh, Open Food Facts API. Um, and somebody was replying, and I believe they had tried the tutorial. And the, there's a tutorial in developers.scp.com that goes through and uses uh, the same API that you were using, the Open Food Facts. Um, and they were saying that they don't get any results to show up. And, and actually, I saw somebody in the forums the other day uh, saying the same thing. So I don't know if there's, it, it appeared to work perfectly fine for you, but I don't know if there was some recent uh, change to the, uh, to the open food facts API that, uh, that, 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 that you can share a tip with people that, uh, uh, of how you got it working. Yeah. So we, 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 we created a new tutorial for this barcode scanner with, uh, with the recent changes. So I shared a link with you. Can you please share it in the chat uh, so that they can try it, try out this uh, this tutorial where uh, this works perfectly fine. Oh. Um, okay. We'll we'll work to get that updated. I can't share this URL. Um, but uh, okay. So you're saying that there's a pending update to the to the tutorial. Yeah, so I think I was able to share it on the chat. Yeah, so yeah, um, so we'll have to uh, we'll have to share that uh, we'll have to share that later. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, any uh, any closing remarks that that you want? Because that's uh, that's the last of the questions that we have. Yeah, so I just wanted to say with uh, AppGyver, we are trying to normalize uh, application development for everyone. So this is a first step, and uh, like application development will be will will be developed in a more easier way, so that anyone uh, can start building applications. So, so happy low coding, and good luck with all your uh, developer challenges. 
All right, thanks very much for the excellent presentation and demo this morning, especially brave to demo right uh, right from your phone hooked into the to the screen in a live stream. That's that's very impressive. Uh, and uh, looking forward to all the rest of the AppGyver sessions of today. So continue to tune back in. We've got a we've got a full slate of sessions for you today. Thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, Thomas. Have fun you all.